For eons, humans have pondered about the possibilities of tomorrow. The idea of advanced technology and artificial intelligence has both been praised and scrutinised through the decades. It could make humanity an advanced civilization, or it could destroy everything that we hold. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at a breakthrough in artificial intelligence. Artificial Intelligence and the Vatican Archives The Vatican Archives hold secrets untold. Without a doubt, the knowledge hidden away within the archives could rival the lost knowledge which resided in the Library of Alexandria. For twelve centuries, the Vatican has gathered texts and scriptures, concealing them from common sight. The vast libraries are inaccessible to most, only allowing cardinals and the Pope to enter. The Vatican, on occasion, has been known to grant permission to the archives to certain individuals, but it's an extremely rare occurrence and access is limited to specific scriptures. The Vatican archives are 53 miles long, yet only a few pages worth of content has ever been made available to the public. Codice ratio, however, could be the breakthrough to reveal never-before-published knowledge from the Vatican's library. Its combination of an optical character recognition, known as OCR, and artificial intelligence software, means it's designed to read through texts and publish transcripts online for all to read. Should this be successful, the technology could reveal historical, religious and sacred documents from all over the world to the public. The OCR program has scanned books and printed documents before, but it isn't made to skim through the Vatican archives. The software uses the spaces between letters to break down each letter image, which it then compares to images in its memory bank. The OCR matches the images and translates the letters into code, making the term searchable. Unfortunately, such a process works best on typeset texts. It struggles greatly with handwriting, especially medieval cursive calligraphy. The program can't recognise where a letter ends and another begins. An OCR requires a huge memory bank to have it memorise thousands of words rather than some letters and is a prominent technical challenge. Codice Ratio is working to fix this by trying something never done before. The main scientists in charge of the project are Marco Mayo Reno, Donatella Fermani, Elena Nedu, and Paolo Merialdo. They created a system where the program recognised individual pen strokes instead of whole words. They've called this the jigsaw segmentation. To achieve improved results, the researchers turned to high schoolers for help. They recruited students from 24 schools in Italy to build the memory banks for the project. Once it was developed, the OCR analysed several documents from the Vatican registers, mostly historical letters to European monarchs and noble political correspondents. The results were mixed. The text the programme managed to transcribe were full of spelling errors. This is because the system struggled with certain letters, such as N and M, but regardless, 96 of the letters were transcribed correctly. The team is planning on feeding it more text and documents to transcribe so it will adapt and improve. Jigsaw segmentation could open up letters, diaries, and scientific historical documents worldwide, thus easing the process of reading and finding research materials. Rager Wood, a historian of philosophy in Indiana University, claims it will be problematic for manuscripts that are not professionally written but copied by non-professionals. And Professor Wood does have a point. Handwritten lettering isn't as consistent as computer lettering is, and the act of teaching the OCR will be a tremendously difficult task. As for digitally copying the manuscripts of the Vatican, the concept of being able to bring such grand unknown scriptures back to life is amazing, keeping all the scientists involved hopeful and determined. They wish someday to be able to comprehend Vatican texts and make them accessible to the public. Elon Musk's Neuralink In March 2017, Neuralink, a company funded by Elon Musk, was revealed. During a presentation, Musk showcased his newest scientific idea, brain chips. He showed a pig who had a coin-sized chip inside of her brain. Elon Musk claims, It's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull, with tiny wires. It actually fits quite nicely in your skull. It could be under your hair and you wouldn't know. He claims that Neuralink plans to start human trials soon. 
According to the organisation, the device could help sufferers of neurological disorders control phones and computer devices with their mind. Musk announced that his device could someday even cure dementia, Parkinson's, and spinal cord injuries. Neuralink will record electrical signals in the brain in order to determine potential actions. Recording neurons will let the link decode the information in the brain. The official website of Neuralink stated the following. In the movement-related areas of the brains, neurons represent intended movements. There are neurons in the brain that carry information about everything we see, feel, think, or touch. EEGs can monitor neural activity from outside the head, but they cannot analyse specific signals, whereas the Neuralink, which would be inserted inside the brain, could do this with ease. The link would be made of micron-scale threads and inserted into areas of the brain which control movement. Every thread will contain a multitude of electrodes. These threads, Musk assures, will be flexible and tiny. So much so they'll be inserted using a robotic machine and not by human hands. This therefore leaves no room for human error. A Neuralink app would accompany the brain chip. This would allow you to control your iOS device, keyboard or mouse with your mind by simply thinking about what you'd like to do. Officially, the Neuralink is a BMI, Fully Integrated Brain Machine Interface, sometimes referred to as a BCI or a Brain Computer Interface. The BMI can link technology to the brain directly. Information from the brain will be sent to the device or vice versa. For example, a computer could send information to the brain that would make it possible to restore the sense of touch to the body. However, many question the safety of such a device, since countless things could go wrong. There's also a lack of safety criteria. It's new territory and lacks standard guidelines, which means we could have to take the company for their word when they claim it's safe to use. And is that really a risk that people are willing to take? The main goal of the project is allegedly to help those with paralysis have their independence returned to them. This is by allowing them the power to control the electronics around them. It'll make it easier to communicate in everyday society, and might let people be more creative, since they can edit and alter videos, artworks, and photographs with their mind. Clinical trials are yet to begin, and safety has not been tested as of yet. But Musk assures the public that safety is something they all take extremely seriously. Unfortunately, there's always a risk for anything to go wrong. They state that the neurosurgical robot is capable and efficient at electrode insertion, they say that the whole mate of the skull would be 23 millimeters large in diameter, but inserting this device into the head could put people at risk of heavy bleeding. There's also a chance that blood vessels may be damaged. Currently, the company is facing opposition from many critics who fear the danger which this device may impose on human life. New York Robot Passes Self-Awareness Test the King's Wise Men puzzle has been solved by a robot in New York. The puzzle serves as a test of self-awareness. The puzzle itself is confusing on purpose, an induction puzzle meant to be a test of intelligence and logic. In the scenario of the puzzle, the King calls upon three wise men to his court. He is to choose an advisor and places hats upon their head. They're able to see the hats of the other two men, but not their own. The hats are either white or blue, and the king will give the title of advisor to the first man to know what colour hat he's wearing. There's either one, two, or three blue hats in this scenario, and the king declared the contest would be fair to all participants. They were also forbidden to speak to each other. This puzzle was altered for three robots by roboticists. They told the robots they had been given a pill that forbade them from speaking to one another. All three of them were then asked which was still able to speak. None of them were able to solve the problem and pondered over it until one of them uttered, I don't know. Immediately, they spoke up again. Sorry, I know now. The robot heard its own voice and realised that they were still able to speak. The team of scientists realised that this test, though simple, is the first breakthrough in many that will make robots even more useful to humans in the future, should they be able to solve problems with improved philosophical wisdom. John Sullins, philosopher of technology, claims the team are barking up the right tree. This by no means suggests that robots have proper consciousness in the sense we know it, but it means they're able to simulate problems and solve them logically, something that can be beneficial to humanity. Just last year, 
an artificial intelligence supercomputer managed to convince humans it was actually a teenage boy, passing the Turing test over the internet. It seems there's boundless potential for the future. Could a world exist in which artificial intelligence and humanity is perfectly balanced? Can technology really be trusted and relied on, or will it be our downfall? A thousand questions which lack answers, but what we can know, rest assured, is that whatever our future is, it won't be bland nor dull. It'll be exciting and innovative, or, should some critics be believed, a hellish nightmare. So what do you make of these artificial intelligences and its ability? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and help us by growing this community, whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.